chapter 1.3 lever systems in this video we will look at the following things first of all the three classes of lever and the use in sport and secondly the definition of mechanical advantage so then lever systems um, as we've looked at uh, already the bones and the muscles in the body work together in order to uh, provide movement and this is done uh, by forming levers Okay, so a lever is a rigid structure that turns about a pivot, which on its own probably doesn't make a lot of sense at the minute, but once we go through this particular video, hopefully it will become a lot clearer. So there are four different parts to a lever. These are the lever arm, the fulcrum, otherwise known as the pivot, the effort, and the load. So, the lever arm is typically formed by the bones in the body. Okay, so... If you look at the arm, um, a lever arm could be the radius and ulna, or in the leg, it could be uh, the tibia and fibula. When we look at the fulcrum, or the pivot, the, this is represented by the joints of the body, so the elbow, the knee, the hip, the shoulder. These are uh, the points in, in the body which the movement takes place. We then have the effort, which is provided by the muscles. When the muscles contract, this is providing the effort to move this particular lever or the lever arm. And then we have the load, which is the weight of the body parts that are moved or the force needed to lift, push or pull um, a, bit, you know, a particular movement or a particular item. So we've got three different types of lever um, that we typically use within the body. Um, we have the first class, second class and third class lever systems. And they're all identified according to the positions of the fulcrum effort and load okay so look at these in more detail um, so looking at first class levers first this is where the fulcrum is located between the effort and the load so it's almost like a seesaw so the fulcrum or the pivot uh, which in, in the case of the body the joint is located bang in the middle of the lever arm and then we have the effort which is provided by the contraction of the muscles on one side and the load which we said is like the weight of the body parts that are moved or the forces needed to, to, to push or pull things is located on the opposite side. So in oh, everyday life, um, an example would be the use of a crowbar. So the pivot would be the curved bit of the crowbar that would be kind of pushing or resting on the ground. We then have the small end of the crowbar that would get underneath the... the um, a nail or something we're trying to remove that would that would be provided by or that would represent the load and then the effort would be the the longer end which you'd be pushing down with your hand in order to create that particular movement more so in sporting terms and in how we use uh, our, our body um, a good example is at the neck so the fulcrum is obviously the neck joint the effort of one side of the, uh, the lever arm is provided by the muscle, which is the trapezius at the back of the neck. And then the load, which is the opposite end of the lever arm, is the weight of the cranium itself, which was obviously be pulling down. So a good example from sport of this particular lever in action would be in football if you are looking to flick on a header. So a long ball has been played up to maybe an attacker and he's looking to flick it on to someone behind him. Okay, moving on to second class levers, and this is where the load is located between the fulcrum and the effort. So this time it's the load that's uh, bang in the middle of the lever arm, or like located between the fulcrum and the effort. So in, in everyday terms, a good example of this would be the wheelbarrow. Okay, so we've got the fulcrum uh, represented where the, the axle uh, on the wheel uh, would be on the wheelbarrow. Then we have the load, which is that kind of bucket container in the middle where you'd have a you know, soil or whatever item you've got in your, your wheelbarrow. And then the effort would be the handles where you're having to lift that particular weight up in order to move the wheelbarrow. In terms of our human body and its use in sport, um, a brilliant example of this is at the ankle. Uh, the reason being, the fulcrum uh, would be the kind of the ball of feet or your toes so the kind of joints just um, between your, your carpals and your phalanges the load is 
your body weight, so the whole of the your your body mass that's acting down, and then the effort would be the gastrocnemius, which is contracting in order to lift your heel up and kind of cause that plantar flexion of the ankle. Um, so an example of this would be um, a ballerina who often walks around on tiptoes, or if you're sprinting and you're looking to kind of run off the balls of your feet and get that, that push, uh, which gives you a little bit more force when you are running. And finally, we have third class levers, okay? And this is where the effort is located between the fulcrum and the load. So this time, it's the effort that is in the middle. Okay, so the example I've got from kind of everyday life is the fisherman who's got the rod kind of resting against his, his stomach, so that's causing the fulcrum, so that's where the movement's going to take place. We then have the effort um, of the fisherman trying to lift the rod up, okay? And then the load, which is the, the opposite end of the fulcrum, um, at the end of the, the lever arm, the load is provided by the weight of the fish that is, of course, trying to pull away from the hook and the line. Okay, in human body terms and sporting terms, uh, a brilliant example of this is at the elbow, um, the fulcrum being the elbow joint itself, the effort being the biceps, which is contracting to try and lift not only the kind of uh, weight of the radius and the ulna. But also, as you can see, the dumbbell which the uh, performer is trying to lift and perform a bicep curl with. Okay, and obviously the load is provided by um, the bicep curl and the lower arm itself. Okay, so this one, the fulcrum at one end, effort in between the fulcrum and the load. So that's the three class of lever. The hardest thing now is actually trying to remember which order they are in. Okay, so. Good way to remember this is with this particular diagram. So if we write down the letters FLE, so flea, and the numbers one, two, three directly underneath us. Um, so flea, one, two, three, the F and the one, okay, right next to each other, and that represents a first class lever which has the fulcrum in the middle. The L and the two represents a second class uh, lever where the load is in the middle, and the E and the three is a third class lever where the effort is in the middle. Okay, so if we can remember flea on one, two, three, the numbers represent the type of lever or the class of lever, sorry, and then the letters represent the, the particular feature of the lever that is in the middle of the lever arm. Next thing we need to know is what mechanical advantages. Okay, so basically levers are used to make a small force into a greater one. Okay, and this is known as gaining a mechanical advantage. So a mechanical advantage is where a large load can be moved with a smaller effort. So it's particularly important, um, you know, in how it's used by the human body, and more so how it's used in sport. So a kind of equation for working out mechanical advantage is load divided by the effort. Okay, so you shouldn't really need um, to apply that in the exam, but it is worth just making a note of and being aware of. Okay, so that's um, a summary then of lever systems and mechanical advantage. What you need to do now is to fill in your flip learning mat, and more importantly, you need to watch this video a number of times so that when you come into the lesson, um, you fully understand this particular topic and we can look to apply it in greater detail.